Alex here with part 105 of the My Docket series on child custody and visitation. As with my previous videos, I'll take this opportunity to direct my viewers to part zero if you haven't seen it yet. That's the video that contains the detailed disclaimers and the underlying purpose of the series. Two things that I would glaze over are, number one, I'm not in the middle of this right now. My case is completely and totally over. It's closed. It cannot be reopened, and that's because my excess parental rights have been terminated. Number two, the nutshell version as to the purpose of the series has to do with providing my viewers with one big example of my eight-year-long high-conflict child custody ordeal from beginning to end in chronological order. Going into this video requires explaining um, a mistake that this judge, my judge, made. He helped. He tried to order me to show cause and show why I shouldn't be held in contempt for not filing the affidavit that he ordered me to file on ghost lawyering. But if all of my viewers have been watching the series, then you will all know, unlike the judge, that I did file an affidavit. So as soon as I saw the order to show cause, I went either the same day or the next day with something known as an objection, invoking peremptory challenge of judge. And um, I'm going to explain more about that when we actually get to the document rather than do it right now. And he responded within a few hours, two or three hours, saying, oops, I screwed up, sorry, and he vacated his own order. So this is actually an opportunity to really show how, at this point in time, I think he's denied two, maybe three contempt motions. And I think there's a lot of my viewers that go through this trying to get the court to enforce its orders against their ex, and the court just really doesn't care. But when it comes to the court enforcing its own order for its own interests in this particular situation, he wants to know who is writing my papers for me so that he can punish them. Um, ultimately, his goal is to get me to stop filing papers, which is his number one goal, even over the best interest of the child. So for me, it was the difference that got under my skin that, 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 that bothered me is the, the attentiveness and the importance that he put into his own things and the, the little importance, the little he cared about things that came to um, the abuse and neglect of our son. So anyway, I think at this point in time, we need to go ahead and take a look at what the judge has filed. Here we have the judge's order to show cause regarding contempt. He starts off with his standard introductory paragraph indicating that he entered an order on November 7th regarding ghost lawyering. We talked a little bit about this when we went over his actual um, order, so I'm going to go ahead and skip past this. He, define, he uh, mentions NRS 22.010, defining the statute of contempt of court, and he explains that it is disobedience or resistance to any lawful writ. Um, and then here he says to date that I, that I have failed to file with the court my affidavit as directed by his order and based on my failure to comply with the court's order he's trying to order me to appear and show cause why I shouldn't be held in contempt of court. And all of this guys of course he screwed up because I actually did file it and he is going to uh, recognize it in the same video just, uh, just bear with me we'll look at a few more documents here. Okay. <sighs> Next, we have the certificate of service by mailing, indicating that under Rule 5, his administrative assistant mailed this to both myself and electronically served my ex's attorney. Here is my response to his screw-up. I'm filing an objection invoking preemptory challenge of judge consistent with NRS 22.030, so section 3. Before I go into this, it's wrong. It could have been right if an exception didn't apply. In Nevada, we have a statute that deals with contempt of court and there is a subsection in that statute that says that if you would like to, you can object to that judge presiding over the contempt hearing and force another judge to instead, instead preside over it. There is unfortunately a list of exceptions and one of, uh, if I remember correctly, the exceptions don't specifically state this, but they specifically cite laws. So they say something like, except as otherwise provided under, and then they cite like four or five different statutes. And at the time, I didn't read that. And I hope that you guys can actually take advantage of my mistake, because when you're excited, when you're representing yourself, when you're upset, when there's emotions involved, you'll sometimes skip over things, you won't read things, and you could make mistakes. Anyway, one of those exceptions 
is the family divisions of the district court. If you are in a family division, you unfortunately cannot use this peremptory challenge. The reason I choose to use the word peremptory challenge, and this actually confused the clerks as well, is because that's what the Supreme Court of Nevada referred to it in a case, and I think the case was Awad v. Wright. And in that case, even though it wasn't a peremptory challenge under the Supreme Court rules, which is what most people use, it's the one that, that deals with you pay like a $350 fine, and then you, um, you are not a fine, like a fee, and then you, if your judge hasn't res, uh, ruled on anything in your case and it's within a certain number of days, you can bump the judge off the case. That's the one that everyone else knows about in Nevada. This is an obscurely known version of it, and this is the one under Awad v. Wright, the Supreme Court of Nevada says, and you don't have to even pay the fee for this one. You can just file the objection for free, you can get them knocked off your case just for the contempt hearing only. But anyway, as I mentioned earlier, there is an exception, actually a list of exceptions, and one of those exceptions is family division um, proceedings. If you are in a family division, you unfortunately can't use this remedy. Now, the judge didn't actually use this against me. Once he realized that he screwed up, he vacated his own hearing on his own. But I still wanted to mention that to my viewers because I don't want you guys to get excited and get misled as to how NRS 22.03 also section 3 works. So going into the brief summary, we have the paragraph indicating that the court entered its order on November 7th and then on November 13th I filed the affidavit as this judge requested me to do. And then I state here that for reasons that cannot be explained, the court ordered sua sponte, which means without the prodding of either party, that I am to appear and show cause why I should be held in contempt of court. Uh, I would like to mention another thing here is I, I thought about filing something telling the judge, hey, I think you're not paying attention because I did file this, but I didn't know if the judge would say something like, yeah, I did see your affidavit, but it's not in compliance with what I wanted. And so I thought to myself, should I just tell him that he messed up or should I use this rule just in case? That way I can tell a different judge that he messed up because I, I was thinking at this point in time, there is a chance that he might wait until the hearing and then right then and there when I'm in the hearing, he might say something like, yeah, I knew that you filed that, but I don't think that that was good enough to comply with my order, therefore you're held in contempt to go to jail. So to play it safe, I wanted to use this objection invoking peremptory challenge of judge to bump him off the case, talk to a different judge about it. But it, like I said, guys, I didn't end up having to do this because he took care of his own mistake. Next we have uh, here indicating that recusal is mandatory. This is, a, oh, this is what I talked about earlier. So here is Awad B. Wright, Supreme Court of Nevada, 1990. And in this case, the Supreme Court actually states that the judge who refused to comply with 22.030 subsection 3 um, violated the law and that she actually, I think they mentioned that she showed her bias for having done so. Um, so yeah, here they're stating that she should have let the contempt proceedings be heard by a different judge and because she didn't recuse herself, she violated the law. So I use this case to force him off, to for, try to force him off. And then here we have the purpose of the automated recu automatic recusal, and that goes a little bit further into a Wad B. Wright. Now this is interesting, guys. Um, this is just a little piece of history. This isn't really relevant to the case, um, because as I mentioned, this doesn't really apply to this type of case because it's in the family division. But apparently, the, uh, the portions that I want to mention here is this. The legislature has thus declared the public policy of the state not so much for the protection of an individual litigant as for the preser preservation of the respect and high regard the public has always maintained for the courts. What's really sad is this is back in 1929, this specific case that they're mentioning in Awad Wright, Right. And that just goes to show you how differently the public thinks of the courts now than they did back then. Apparently back then there was respect for the courts that the public has, according to them, always maintained. Nowadays, the public has very little respect for the courts. In fact, a lot of the public um, has contempt for the legal system. So it's just interesting to see that this specific law passed by the legislature was based on a completely different society. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move on now. Um, conclusion, I am requesting that the court schedule an order to show cause hearing for um, a different date with a different judge that yeah he's disqualified from presiding over that hearing and that a different judge take over and then we have my certificate of rule 5 service indicating that I personally served this objection upon the attorney and we got a list of exhibits with exhi with the uh, affidavit regarding ghost lawyering guys I already filed this I already went over it in the my docket series since I've already gone over it, I'm gonna skip over this piece as I mentioned in my previous videos you can always go down in the description below click on the links download the documents for yourself and take a look and if you have any questions at that time you can always post something down in the comments 
Request for submission. So I am requesting that the objection invoking peremptory challenge of judge is submitted to the court. And I think that's uh, next page is just a certificate of Rule 5 service indicating that it's service upon the ex's attorney. Here we have the corrected certificate of service by the judge. Apparently the judge's administrative assistant did something wrong with their certificate of Rule 5 service. I'm not sure what they did, but I can guess that maybe they just sent it to the wrong address or something like that. In any event, I'm going to just go ahead and move on rather than looking uh, and check what they messed up with regards to their certificate of service. They've already done enough messing up as it is. Next document is the judge realizing he screwed up and he vacates his own order. So we go into his order vacating order to show cause regarding contempt and his order regarding objection. On November 7th, 2012, he entered his order sitting hearing order regarding ghost lawyering. In its order, he mentioned that I was supposed to comply with this affidavit. And then on December 11th, he filed an order to show cause showing that I need to indicate to the court why I failed to file the affidavit. And then he follows up with December 12th he fi that I filed an objection claiming that the judge screwed up. And then he states, oops, he did in fact file the affidavit, sorry. And then he said based on his compliance with the court's prior order, he vacates his order to show cause. Last thing that he mentions is because the court won't be hearing this issue that my other request for, um, for relief in the objection is moot. And he moves on to... His certificate of mailing here under Rule 5, where it indicates that he mailed this document to both myself and my ex's attorney, and that's it. Going into the aftermath, I filed, looks like, one, two documents, and I incurred zero dollars in fees, or that's right, zero dollars in fees because, or costs, because those are free filings. My ex's attorney didn't file anything, so she incurred zero dollars in costs. I didn't have an attorney, so I incurred zero dollars in attorney fees. My ex's attorney would have probably spent a tiny bit of time reviewing each of these orders. I doubt she really cared because none of these required any work from her. She didn't have to do anything about any of these filings. So I think for the order to show cause, five minutes, and then for the order vacating order to show cause, five minutes, which comes to a total of 10 minutes. And then I think for my objection, my request for submission, and then the court's uh, corrected certificate of service, I think we can lump those all into five more minutes. Total of 15 minutes at a rate of $250 an hour comes to $62.50 in attorney fees for my ex. As with my previous videos, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.